Hi, I'm Jason Horsler at the Hook Road Studio and this is video number four in a series of African drumming videos that I've put together. Uh, it would help if you went to watch the other videos first. So there was a basics video, number one, and then there was a more advanced video that I had to split up into a part 2A and a part 2B. And what we're going to look at in this video is we're going to look at how to be creative with traditional patterns and start making them into new and interesting ideas. Um, so, uh, this video is mainly shot for my own African drumming pupils and the schools that I work at, but anybody could benefit from it. Let's have a go. So, we're going to start with the idea of um, being creative using filters or uh, just ways of modifying things. And the first one we're going to look at is structural. And in structure, in music, the structure of music has got to do with verses and choruses and uh, bridges and how, how music is put together, how a song is made into parts and the parts are put together. On a very simple level for us then that means for example how many times do you repeat a pattern before you change it, what do you do to change the pattern and what can you do to make the change interesting. I'm going to use something very simple, uh, it's called a stop and all we're going to do is just stop playing for a, a silent count. We'll use the soaker, I'm going to play four soakers and then end with a bang and I'm going to count aloud and then come back in again in performance I would count in my head so here we go two three four two three four um, you could make the count longer or shorter um, and you can do things like play fills in that count. Um, so if you're playing in a group, uh, the whole group plays the soca, and then one person in the group is responsible during that count of four to play some sort of fill. And so on and so forth. The next thing I want to have a look at is orchestration. Now, normally orchestration refers to how you take a pattern that's played in one way on a drum kit, for example, and play it on different instruments on the drum kit. But on an African drum, it's the same kind of idea. All we're doing is we're taking notes that used to be played one way and now playing them on a different part of the drum, or even replacing them with something else. So, for example, if you were playing a bass, you could try and change the pattern by just playing one of the bass strokes as a slap to see how that would alter the pattern. I'm going to go a step further and actually use a clap. So I'm going to use the, the drum beat that I call the Jabalani beat. It's a very common African pattern and it goes like this. And instead of doing the two uh, slaps as a flam, I'm just going to clap. Um, it sounds quite nice if you start mixing it up a bit, so I'll use, I'll do every second one as a clap. Or you could use a cycle that has three of one and one of the other, that makes a sort of rhythmic resolve. Um, we could also uh, go for total opposites. We could do something like um, change all the notes to sort of, I hesitate to say the opposite sound, but you know, the opposite of a bass kind of does feel like it's a slap. So I could take something like the Dala, uh, which we call, uh, it's about catching fish, woman catching fish, so that's going to be um, catch fish. All we have to do is invert that. So instead of playing a bass, tone, 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 bass, tone, tone, we're now going to go tone, bass, 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 tone. So it would be. And 
once again, you can start playing around with combinations of those. So for example, if you were to play two normal ones and two inverted ones, it would sound like this. Or you could in swap every single time, so that's Or you could do the three of one and then one of the other ones to create a rhythmic um, resolution. The next one I'm going to do is a dynamic type of filter. So what we'll do is dynamics refers to how loud you play the notes. I'm going to go for extreme here. I'm going to um, do something which I call ghosting. And what ghosting is, is you pretend to play the, <laughs> the stroke on the drum but you actually stop your hand just before it hits the skin. Uh, so it looks like you strike the drum, but no sound comes out. Um, so uh, I'll use the cuckoo, um, I think call it part two of the cuckoo drum beat. So that's the one that goes, harvest is good this year, harvest is good this year. Now I'm going to play that for a while and then I'm going to start ghosting and you'll immediately see what I'm talking about. And you can use that to all sorts of effect. Um, the next creative thing you can do to an African drum beat is change the feel of the drum beat. So if it's a drum beat that has a, quite a straight, regular feel, you can give it a bit of a swing, sort of a lilt. Um, if you're not a, a, a very experienced drummer, uh, it's much easier for me just to play it and you immediately pick it up. Um, I could sort of show you manuscript and explain how triplets work, but really you just got to feel these things, that's the best way around it. So I'm going to play the cuckoo again, I'll play it really straight, and then I'll switch over into a swing and you'll immediately see what the deal is. So here we go. Um, That nice sort of bum bum ba dum ba dum bum bum ba dum ba dum. It's sort of like a, it's got that kind of feel to it. <laughs> That's what we call swing. Okay, um, then we got uh, reversal. So, with the idea of reversal, you can take a drum beat that you've learned and try and play it completely backwards. So, the Jabulani beat that springs to mind is something that's quite easy to reverse. You can give this a try. So, forward it is. So, reverse it's going to be. So if I play uh, it reverse in a few times row, you can hear it's quite groovy. So So there I was shifting back and forth depending on how I felt. And you can make up all sorts of things with that kind of idea. Uh, the next one I use is called extension. Um, extension is when you just add more notes to the existing pattern. So um, we'll take something like the most important sort of part of the Wallace Adon. So that goes. And we learned that as Kingdom of Mali. Kingdom of Mali because it comes from Mali. So what we'll do now is we'll just add some more notes to that. So instead of going Kingdom of Mali, let's go Kingdom of 1, 2, 3. Mix it up with the original and you get a nice drum beat. The next one we're going to look at is permutation. Uh, permutation basically means starting a pattern at a different point and then playing forward from there. So um, we could take something like the Wallace Adon. Uh, instead of going Kingdom of Mali, we're going to start on the of. So it would be of Mali Kingdom, of Mali Kingdom.
Now, um, with this one, if somebody was to walk into the room who was familiar with the Wallace of Don and you had already started, they would think your one is on the kingdom, the king part, uh, but in your head it's on the of. So to make the one stand out, you're going to need to have some other people in the group playing something like a cowbell or a shaker to make it really make the one stand out. The other way you could do it uh, is to use structure. So if you were to play four permutated Wallisodons and then come to a stop and count to make a little break like we did at the beginning of the video and then kick in again, then the one will become far more obvious. So I'll give you an example of that. And then you can start combining these uh, various ideas together and see what you can come up with. So you could do something like, um, uh, maybe you could take the Wallace of Dunn and reverse it and permutate it and then maybe you can also alter it by adding an extra note here or there or you could put a bit of a swing on it. So it's really up to you to take something you've learnt on the drums and then just see how you can give it your own flavour. Uh, you will then obviously not be playing the traditional pattern, but these things do need to move forward. You do need to be creative with drums as well. It's good to be able to play something so that's authentic, but um, the point is to actually see if you can come up with new stuff and, and give it your own signature. Uh, I hope this has been inspiring, and I hope that uh, you can take these ideas and apply it to some of the other drum beats you know, uh, even if um, I never taught them to you. But it's, um, there's lots more you can do. And keep watching and please remember to subscribe because I've got other tricks up my sleeve and I've got more videos coming along the way. Thanks very much for watching.